Let me welcome you to this episode of Above the Clouds. Today we will be looking at a verse that is really the verse that teaches us to come before the Lord. Kaye navacha mada sendriyeva budhyat manavanushita svabhavat karoti adhyat sakalang parasmai narayana yeti sama payetad. Whatever one does with body, words, mind, senses, intelligence, or purified consciousness in accordance with the particular nature one has acquired, one should offer to the Supreme thinking, this is for the pleasure of Lord Narayan. So here we find how we can transform our daily life even our ordinary activities uh, into something uh, that we offer to Krishna. Srila Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur has given a nice illustration. I will be reading uh, from the purport uh, here. He says that an ordinary Sanskriti fire begins his activities in the morning by passing stool and urine, cleaning his mouth, brushing his teeth, bathing, meeting his friends and family members, and discussing with them the day's business. In this way, one has so many activities during the day, and a Sanskritifier executes all these activities for his personal material enjoyment. In a similar way, according to Srila Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur, a devotee of the Supreme Lord Narayan should perform all of his daily activities for the pleasure of the Supreme Lord. In this way, everything we do throughout the day will become Bhakt Yanga, or a supplementary aspect of our devotional service to Krishna. To offer our toothbrushing activities uh, for the pleasure of the Lord may not be a direct devotional service, but it is a limb, uh, something that supports uh, devotional service, just like the legs and arms mm, support the whole body. Uh, one can think, I'm doing these ordinary activities, whatever they may be, and uh, I'm not uh, separating them from my purpose, that is my life in Krishna consciousness. Now, mm, there are of course direct devotional services, direct activities of bhakti. And after we have heard what to do with the indirect ones, um, I would like to mm, speak a little bit about the direct devotional service. Mm, as you have heard many times, uh, the direct bhakti is compared with watering the seed of bhakti uh, so that a beautiful creeper can grow that will um, have a fruit, the fruit of love of God. Now, um, Prabhupada writes about this, how this fruit comes. The real cause of the growing of such a fruit, which is here called the nectar mm, of hearing the glories of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is to water the creeper of devotional service by hearing and chanting. In other words, 
our hearing and chanting grows and grows and then becomes a nectarian love-filled activity. The purport, Prabhupada continues, is that one cannot live outside the society of devotees. One must live in the association of devotees where there is constant chanting and hearing of the glories of the Lord. Mm. Does this mean we must all move into a community of devotees? And no, but it means one must be connected uh, with devotees. See, devotees can give you a good inspiration for mm, uh, Krishna consciousness. There is uh, now a great secret mm, mm, which I would like to say. Uh, 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 one should mold his life in such a way that one cannot live in peace without drinking the nectar of the glorification of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Mm, this is really the secret, uh, to mold one's life so that it is actually possible to uh, chant and uh, glorify Krishna. Uh, in 1960, Srila Prabhupada wrote, The nectar of devotion will teach us how to turn the one switch that will immediately brighten everything, everywhere. One who does not know this method is missing the point of life. And uh, uh, this uh, one switch starts with a desire. It's the simple desire to be closer to Krishna in one's consciousness. This is the switch that will brighten everything and it will then go into the method of Shravanam or Kirtanam. How to think of our relationship with Krishna at this stage? Uh, well, uh, Jiva Goswami says, you shouldn't see anything separate from Krishna. That's why <laughs> we should brush our teeth for Krishna. We should walk and talk for Krishna. We should build a house or destroy a house for Krishna. Everything is done in connection mm, uh, to Krishna. And that's the one switch. That's the one simple method we have to learn. To do what we do as an offering to Krishna, especially both the indirect as well as the direct activities of devotional service. And for this, we first of all need to bring Krishna into our awareness. Jiva Goswami gives an example how a devotee should eventually think of Krishna. He says, Mm, a greedy man has obsession with money. Wherever he goes, he sees an opportunity for acquiring wealth. This is the first example. The second example is uh, a very lusty man notices women everywhere. In the same way, a devotee should see the transcendental form of the Lord everywhere, since everything is an expansion of the Lord. What a wonderful idea. Have you ever met these money conscious people? They want to sell you something. They say you can have this item, but imagine if you buy this second item, uh, then you will save so and so much percentage on the first item and this will open the door to 
purchased so many other items. In this way, he has a whole philosophy uh, and the whole methodology how to make money. In the same way, a man who is fixed on uh, um, um, female association, he will know where to go, he will know how to dress, he will know how to speak, <laughs> uh, he will know how to cover his innumerable mistakes, to look, look good. Um, yes, uh, because he has uh, some mm, purpose. Uh, where he moves to, uh, to. So in the same way, the devotees of Krishna must somehow begin to think of Krishna and then see Krishna everywhere. Everywhere they see a chance. Here I can be next to Krishna. And I think I told you before of this devotee uh, who saw vultures circling in the sky and someone came by and asked mm, you seem to be very happy <laughs> you dance but this uh, sign that the vultures are circling means uh, some something has died someone has died mm. the devotee said yes a cow has just now died this i can see from the way the vultures are circling and why do you dance asked the man yeah because now mm, the leather of the cow can be used to make a medanga and with the medanga we can glorify krishna so this uh, is how a devotee goes through the life he brings everything in connection with krishna therefore the verse uh, 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 was telling us how uh, even seemingly unrelatable things which we do due to our conditioned nature that we have obtained from the um, uh, uh, through the n n modes of nature can be used in connection with Krishna. That's our best chance since we are surrounded by the material nature and we ourselves are placed within the conditioned mind and the conditioned body. I wish you to mm, practice this for the next week. Uh, try to see how you can connect things with Krishna. We gave you one example of a devotee uh, who saw the vultures <laughs> circling in the sky. Uh, but there may be more direct, more obvious, more, mm, yes, quick connections which you can uh, draw. Uh, and this way uh, you can be Krishna conscious in every aspect of your life. I wish you all the best and uh, I wish you a lot of spiritual inspiration and see you very soon for the next Above the Clouds.